I'd like to set, share with you in a few words why the World Academy of Art and Science and the World University Consortium consider this such an important initiative. We live in a world of unprecedented speed, complexity, and uncertainty. All of the tremendous progress we've made over the last 200 years seems to be inadequate. All the knowledge we have today seems to be inadequate to cope with the challenges that we face in the 21st century, political, economic, ecological, social, educational, in all spheres. As an American, I've seen the institutions of democracy developed over 200 years now shaking and challenged at their foundation, things we took for granted. We understand from that that building institutions is not enough, that the foundation for the successful functioning of any institution is the software on which it runs, which is culture. We forget, and my own country has forgotten much too soon, that democracy evolved over centuries long as a culture, as a culture of liberalism and liberal values and, and human values long before we had elections, long before uh, blacks were allowed to vote, women were considered uh, allowed to vote, the, part, the, the vote was extended to the public. We live in an age of technology and machinery where we tend to take the machinery, the mechanism as the solution. And we see whether it's in America or in Europe or in our international institutions that the machinery only runs as well as the software on which it's operating. Culture is that software. Culture represents the essential knowledge that we have gained, humanity has gained over millennium, about how to live successfully. Times have changed, technology has changed, our style of living has changed, but the fundamental values, the ways in which human beings relate to each other, is something universal. It's something perpetual. And we have to discover the culture of the future that's going to help us evolve the institutions of the future that are going to really work for us, because it's quite clear that the institutions we have today are inadequate. All of the institutions, our economic institutions, political institutions, our educational institutions, are inadequate to the challenges of rapid social evolution. Therefore, I, I'd like to indicate, stress, that this, this, this institute, this new institute focusing on culture, is not focusing on the distant past. We are not here to glorify the arts of the past or the cuisine of the past or the history of the past, as important as they are. We're here to draw on the essential knowledge that humanity has acquired in the past so that we can move on to the future. There are other institutions to preserve the past, but we need to create the future. If you think about human creativity, how we have evolved from the time out of the forest, it is the meeting of different people with different language, different habits, different traditions, different experiences, has been the source of all our creativity. All our creativity comes from confronting something different that doesn't fit within our conceptual framework, that's different from the way we live, the way we behave, and broadening our outlook in order to encompass a wider perspective. And that's what we have in humanity today, an unprecedented exposure to different points of view. And this region plays a critical role in the future evolution of humanity. This is a meeting place of East and West at a time when we're globalizing. And I hope you all understand, as I certainly do, that the solution is not for all of us to imitate and reproduce the institutions of the West. They have taken us to a certain level, and we see the challenges that our economic and our political and our social system faces today. We need new and better solutions that are more integrated, more comprehensive, 
there are lessons to be learned from all over the world as to how to fashion not only in the institutions, but the software, the cultural software on which they're to be based. Unless we do that, we won't have peace anywhere in the world in future. If we do that, we can really build what President Constantinescu rightly calls a culture of peace. As we see it in the academy, the priorities of this institution are cultural in the broadest sense, in how do we foster effective international relationships, how do we promote employment on a global level, because the problem of employment is not local or national, it's a challenge for the youth of all humanity. How do we promote the implementation of the SDGs uh, on a global level? Because we can't achieve them locally, and if we did, it wouldn't solve the pur serve the purpose. Cultural diplomacy is the ultimate software that we have developed to move away from physical confrontation and violence to negotiating treaties, to formulating laws, to building institutions, to really finding the way we can effectively live with each other as human beings. And if we can do it here, here in the Levant, I believe we can do it anywhere and everywhere. Education, the institution of education, helps us abridge centuries of learning and pass it on into the new generation so that our youth today can carry forward from where we started, from all that we have learned, and move into the future. We need something similar like that in the age of diplomacy. I believe that this institution, IASACCL, can abridge decades of diplomacy and forge a living culture of peace in the future. So it's a great pleasure that we come here and we look forward to working with all of you and uh, all of those in Romania and in other countries to link this effort with others around the world. Thank you.